Hey everybody and welcome to Grayscale Gorilla. I am the Gorilla and today we're going to do part two of the eyeballs tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, head on back. That's where we build all this stuff in Cinema 4D, get it animated, get it lit, get it textured and get it rendered so we can come into After Effects, which is what we're going to do now, and uh, composite it, do a, do an edit on it and get it all ready for, uh, get it all ready for output. So. Let's head on into After Effects and, and, uh, and, and composite this dude. Uh, here we are. We have all of our renders out, and I've imported them into uh, After Effects by uh, double-clicking and going to, uh, let's see, eyeballs. Here's my eyeballs renders. Uh, there they are. And then I just select the first one, and they all come in as a TIFF sequence. I rendered them out as a TIFF, and I hit open, and then I did that for each one of these sequences. And I like image sequences because uh, they allow me to work a little bit quicker and, and also start to composite before the render is totally finished. So we're all in here in After Effects. One thing we do want to make sure is if we right click and we go to interpret footage main, that it's 24 frames a second. And I like the look of 24 frames a second. You know, I'm an old guy. I, I like film. I like the way it looks. Um, you could also composite this at 30, but I wanted to make sure everything was 24. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a composition for each one of these scenes. So each one of these renders is a different camera angle. Let's start with eyeballs main and just drag it right into uh, this uh, little icon right here and that's gonna make a new composition you can see now we have a new composition with the exact length of eyeballs main which is just the end here boom let's do that for all of these eyeballs start eyeball close-up uh, two eyeball close-up one and now we have four different uh, compositions and now we can actually uh, composite each of these scenes separate here's one here Let's go to close up here. There's one there. Let's go to this one. Boom. Uh, you can see we're named named a little bit differently here. That's okay. And bam. So what we're gonna do is composite each of these separately. Let's start with the main one and really tweak this guy out. And then what we could do is copy and paste the uh, compositing that we do on this scene to the other one since they're so similar. So one thing I want to do is uh, something I do all the time first thing is add a, uh, a new adjustment layer right there and then come into our effects and presets I don't think we'll need character stuff so let's squish that out of the way let's go to effects and presets and go to curves love me curves love me some curves we can just play with the curves and get a little bit brighter maybe crunch the blacks a little bit pull up the gamma and and brighten it and start to get a tone in the scene uh, uh, something else I I, uh, I do is add a lot of uh, solid colors, um, so we could go to uh, glow, and uh, I use Null Light Factory all the time. This LF glow gives me a nice glow. This is something uh, I picked up from my buddy Anthony. I always got to give him a shout out because uh, I stole this right from him. So we can uh, scale this up and uh, kind of play around with the brightness. And this is gonna give us some color to kind of tint our scene a little bit. We could probably pull the color down a little. And if we screen this dude onto our, our scene, you can see we have this nice kind of highlight going on right there. Um, and if we if we duplicate that solid and, uh, and rotate the whole thing around, maybe we do amber colors from the bottom. And now you can see we have kind of an amber at the bottom and a, and a blue tone at the top. Uh, but of course they're way too bright, so we could just drop these down to like 20, 30%. And we're just kind of giving the scene a little bit of atmosphere and also giving it a little bit extra color as well. Um, you can see it's a little washed out, so let's put the curves above the, uh, above the, uh, the glows there and start to bring, in, bring our, our, our contrast back a little bit by using curves. Uh, I think I feel like I talk about curves all the time, but it's really one of those tools that if you learn how to use it, it can uh, really be powerful for a lot of color correction and, and really let you tweak. So we're going dark to bright. So our brights are brighter here and our darks are darker here. We're just kind of giving it a contrast curve, giving it a nice tone. And the whites are a little washed out, so let's pull that back. 
And uh, you've probably seen me do this as well, but you can actually come into the color channels, things like blue and pull up on the blues and give it this little tone. Even pull out the blues and give it a crazy tone if you want. Now, if you want to do this tutorial and give it a really wacky uh, look and also kind of make it stand out and use your own name and whatever, and of course, and all that, but you can play around with this curve here and give it a totally different uh, feel as far as coloring. Um, and like I say, look at how powerful curves can be just by kind of playing around. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's play around a little bit and try to find like a middle ground. That looks pretty good to me. So you can see an original, there's the original render out of 3D and here's after a, a kind of a simple, quick, uh, composite kind of trick here. Um, uh, what we can also do is add, a uh, another curves, another adjustment layer, new adjustment layer. And, uh, you know, I feel like I do this on every, every one of these tutorials too. We're going to add some gradient and use the ellipse tool and make it an oval and uh, invert it and add some some softness to the to the to the uh, mask and that's gonna give us this kinda soft um, let's go up to this one let's move this down I always want like my color correction on top of everything actually let's talk about that really quickly if we put the gradient on top of the color correction you're gonna see it's just kinda browning out all the corners but if I put the if I put the uh, vignetting below the color correction, it's actually going to tint the color correction. Uh, and it's going to give the corners a little bit of that blue that I added in the color correction. And uh, you can see it's a huge difference between the two. And in fact, let me grab this so you can see a little bit better. There's just, just by reversing adjustment layers, that's what you're getting. Now, of course, once we add that adjustment layer, we have to tone down our, our vignette quite a lot. Little goes a long way. We can see now um, we're just kind of hinting at the corners and giving this a little bit more focus. So that's our that's our main scene there. Um, and what we could do from here is actually just go ahead and copy everything we did in that scene and paste it into all of our other ones. We still may have to tweak, but at least we're starting from a place that is similar. Uh, and you could come into let's say eyeballs uh, four. I think this is eyeball start. Yeah. So that's looking pretty good. That's looking uh, pretty good. It's a little dark on the bottom there. You can see we have our uh, we have all of our uh, texturing going on. Our eyeballs filled up, and that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's get this into an edit and see how they all look together, because it's not until you look at them all next to each other through an edit that you're going to see kind of different color variations and things you may want to change. So if we come to our project, what we could do is grab. Uh, we can grab all four of these compositions. So I just command shift or uh, I command clicked on all four of these, and I'm gonna drag all four of these into another composition. And the window is gonna pop up and say, "Hey, new composition from selection. What do you want me to do? Do you want to make a single composition? Do you want to make multiple four more compositions? Well, no. We want a single comp. We want the dimensional values from." Um, the eyeballs main, and I think that is uh, just picking the size of our of our composition. And uh, do we want to sequence the layers, or do we want them to just go on top of each other? Um, and we actually want to turn off overlap, and we do want to sequence layers, and we hit OK. So now you can see what we have is all four comps playing in a row in a new uh, composition. So if we come over here and we say uh, uh, edit comp boom we have edit comp that has all four of these inside and of course they're out of order so let's reorder these um, let's put main comp last and let's put this is the start so that's good let's uh, make this the start and I'm using shift a lot here to snap to edges snap to uh, the timeline here so use shift to, to handle all this stuff I think this might be our second uh, this might be our second edit here right there Here's our third, and here's our uh, here's our last. So let's reorder that. Now, what we don't want to use is all the frames from all the renders. We just want parts of each of these to kind of set the scene. You don't want to see an empty, empty, empty scene all the time. You want to cut between the action. So what we could do is we could say, okay, here's the start. Okay, but now all the eyeballs are coming out. That's a good starting line let's cut right here so I'm gonna grab the end of our layer and hold shift and and snap it right to our uh, our playhead there now let's go to our second scene and 
I think the second scene needs to already have some spheres in it. So maybe somewhere around here. And I'm going to grab the beginning again and hold down shift and snap to the timeline. And we're going to move that back and also hold down shift and try to snap it right to the edge. So now we go edit to edit. Boom. Edit one, edit two. Got it? Let's go to uh, let's go to cut three. Let's go to the bottom. And the bottom I want to already be a little bit full and I want to go to where it's all the way full. Like right there is where it should end. But maybe here is where it starts like that. So again, holding down shift, I'm going to make the edit and I'm going to squish this back. One edit, two edit, three edit. Now, this works for three, four, five, six edits. If you're looking at a 20 edit, 50 edit commercial, uh, my friend, you may want to check out some editing software. But the basic stuff, After Effects goes a long way to do five, six, seven edits. And in fact, I do almost all my editing in After Effects like a fool. Um, and it's uh, mainly because uh, I haven't sat down and learned you know, Final Cut well enough. And the times that I do need an edit, uh, I, it's quicker for me to come in After Effects. I'm comfortable here and I could do this. So just a heads up. If you're doing this a lot, you may want to look into uh, some other package. Uh, so the end, I think I like the whole thing as the end because I think we trimmed it pretty good at the beginning. So that's the end of our commercial here. Let's uh, do a quick render. I'm going to hit zero on the keypad and let it do a quick render. And we're going to see how this all looks together. Okay, so there you go. One, two, three, filling up, filling up, filling up, filling up, four. Now, if we had time, there's something I would like to add. You see how the bottom just barely fills up right here? It just barely fills up. And then we edit out to a fully formed, almost fully formed five. So basically the end of this edit is right when this part of the five gets filled. And there's like kind of a continuity issue where that just gets filled. And then now we cut and look, we have kind of a full five almost formed. So maybe we maybe we come into this render and we, we, we wait a little bit longer. Or we have one more establishing shot before we kind of get out to the edge. Um, that's one little nitpicky thing that you may want to play with, but that's one thing I'm seeing in this edit that I'm not a fan of. So edit one, edit two, edit three, and then out. Now the end is a little bit boring, right? I would like a camera move on this. That was another thing that we could probably go back into cinema and re-render out a camera move. But if it's a subtle enough camera move, we could probably do this in the composition itself. So let's open up our eyeballs main comp and add a camera move right from the beginning. So let's grab the uh, let's grab the eyeballs main and let's hit scale and let's go to something like I don't know right when, when right when it ends somewhere around here. Let's set a keyframe for scale at 100%. Now let's go all the way back up and and kind of zoom in. We could just grab these numbers and zoom in a little bit. And you know 110 percent or so might be enough. Uh, but what that's going to do is give us this kind of pull back feeling. And another thing, and I think they do this in the original spot, they also have a little bit of rotation. So I can add a new keyframe for rotation, hit U to see both uh, sets of keyframes. I'm going to set this to be zero and I'm going to set this to be something like three degrees. So now it's actually going to go back in and in. Uh, maybe even three degrees is too much. Real subtle kind of movements here go a long way. So now we go, we kind of fly out of it. And you know what? 110% or so is usually enough to keep things sharp, to not screw too much with resolution. If you zoom way up, of course, it's going to look all all low res and crappy. But 10, 15-ish percent, especially if there's movement on it, it's usually enough to kind of not have to go back and do a re-render. So here we are. We got... Um, our uh, keyframes. One thing I'm going to do is set these last keyframes to be easy ease keyframes. And uh, let me make sure I set that right. Easy ease. Boom. So now we're just going to ease into that move. Looking good. Now when we come back out to the edit comp, you're going to see it does the zoom. Right there. Boom. Okay, so that's just adding a little bit of kind of action right there, a little bit of movement, and um, it's looking pretty good. All right, cool. So 
what do we do from here? We have our edit. Let's let's pretend we're 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 feeling good about our edit and we're doing the whole thing. Uh, let's talk about overall color correction and also some uh, motion blur. Something I'm really missing from all this is it's all too sharp and these these spheres are kind of going too fast to not have any motion blur on it. So let's first of all go in and add some motion blur. Um, I use real smart mo 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 ugh, real smart motion blur RSMB and I use it I uh, usually turn it way down just like a 0.2 or 0.3 you can see now we're starting to get some motion blur built in and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this into everything else and that's gonna give us all the scenes some nice motion blur it's already in there where's our last one main probably needs it and main, the settings may have to be tweaked because our camera angle is so much different. So maybe more motion blur out on the main uh, uh, render. And that's because the scale is different. Up here, we're way close. And a little bit of motion blur goes a long way because we're so close. When we're this far out, you may have to turn it up a little bit. Um, so now we have motion blur going on. We go to our edit comp. And now I'm doing um, another preview here just to see how we got going. Now, and here's and here's a, um, something we're gonna, I think, approach next, which is everything's looking good, the edit's looking good, and, and I'm not 100% happy with the colors. One thing I could do is apply an overall color correction to the whole thing above these comps, and that filters all the way down through and, and gives us a, another layer of color correction without having to go into all of these compositions separately like that, we could just apply it to the whole thing overall. So we can come in and make a new adjustment layer, we can add a new curves, and we could say, uh, you know, I want the whole thing a little bit brighter, a little bit more contrasty, um, and a little bit less saturated. So we can come to um, hue, saturation, and just kind of pull back on that saturation. We don't want it black and white, but you can see it's starting to get a little colorful there, a little too pinkish so you can pull down on that and we can see now it's a little more black and white feel it's not as uh, colorful it's a little more stark feeling not that, that I like a lot more and these are where you can add a overall kind of things uh, you know, overall color correction uh, overlays and uh, blurs um, you know one pixel blurs and things like that to just kind of do an overall comp on the whole thing and mush it all together a little uh, looking pretty good I'm overall happy with it and um, I think we're gonna call this one I think we're gonna call this one yeah all right I think this is good now if you look at the original um, that is, the original that I posted has a, a gradient um, <coughs> has an out uh, kind of a fade out on it and the fade out is something I'm gonna do in a, in a future tutorial pretty soon hopefully um, and that's mainly because uh, the fade out effect was taught to me by somebody I want to uh, kind of talk more about than what I have time for right now but uh, if you want to play around with that that's a really fun effect to get going um, and uh, I think that I think we're close I think we're good so from here just so you know uh, we can go shift command bracket and get a our shift command slash and get into our render queue. From here we can render this all out. Uh, we could add our audio like I added a little audio scene to it. Kick that dude out and uh, you're good. You're ready for you're ready for fun. So um, that, uh, let's call this one. Let's call it. Clap, clap. All right, uh, thanks for watching again, folks. Uh, as always, if you made it to the end of the tutorial, uh, take what you learned and double it. Double the you know, double the effect. How can you do this with a whole name worth of spheres and not just one letter? How can you do this with um, a whole path? Maybe you want a water slide with spheres rolling down it. Um, try to take this somewhere where you can actually use it in uh, your reel because you don't want to put this, uh, you know, in, in your stuff. This is already done by somebody else. And now it's a tutorial, of course. Um, but uh, this is all here to. Uh, get you comfortable with the tools and get you comfortable with learning and get you comfortable with um, uh, making stuff. So uh, hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you check out more tutorials. As always, I really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this one was, was fun. I had a good old time. I'll see you guys in another tutorial real soon. Bye, everybody.